Hey guys, and welcome back to episode 2 of the Vibe Coding series. In this episode, I'm going to show you one of the most critical parts of application development, choosing authentication and database options for your project. When building modern applications, authentication and database selection are fundamental decisions. For our Vibe Coding approach, we want solutions that are simple to implement but also scalable as our user base grows. There are several options available in the market. The most common comparison you will see is between Neon and Superbase. While Neon is a solid product, I still prefer Superbase for this project. The main reason is that Superbase provides a complete package. It handles authentication, offers a fully managed Postgres database, and includes additional features like storage and edge functions. This all-in-one approach reduces integration overhead and let us focus on building features rather than worrying about the infrastructure setup for multiple services. In this episode, we'll focus on setting up authentication in the database using Superbase. Later, I will also demonstrate how to leverage Superbase storage and edge functions. But for now, let's dive into the core setup, user authentication in the database config. Now, let's talk about environment setup. Following the guidance from Superbase documentation, Superbase recommends creating three separate database instances, one for local development, one for staging, and one for production. But why do we need these three distinct environments? The answer is rooted in the best practices for software development. Having separate environments for development, staging, and production is fundamental. During development, we often experiment with new features, make mistakes, or need to roll back changes. If we use the same database for both development and production, we risk the corrupting or losing real user data. This can be catastrophic, especially as your application grows and gains real users. Some beginners might think it's okay to use a single database for everything, especially when building an MVP. While this might work for quick prototypes, it's not a sustainable approach once your application starts to gain traction. Mixing development and production data can quickly become a nightmare. Bugs or accidental data changes in development could impact your live users, leading to data loss or downtime. If you don't believe how risky it is, try run a project with a real customer using a single shared database. You will quickly see the challenges and potential disasters that can arise. That's why from the start, it's best to set up dedicated environments, local for development, staging for pre-production testing, and production for your live application. Now, let's move on to creating the staging and production projects in Superbase. Once you sign up and log into your Superbase organization, you will have the option to create new projects. Let's just start by creating the staging project first. When you initialize a new project, Superbase will spin up a dedicated Postgres database for you. Make sure to generate a strong password for the database. This is important for security. You can select the region based on where your primary users are located. For example, if your users are mainly in Southeast Asia, choose the Singapore region. If your user base is primarily in the US, choose a US region. For most cases, you can leave the advanced settings at their default values. Go ahead and create the staging project. Once the staging project is set up, repeat the process to create your production project. For the production project, you can name it to be Euclidean AI site. Again, generate a strong password for the Postgres database. Choose the region and proceed to create a new project. With both the staging and production projects created, you now have isolated environments for pre-production testing and for your live application. Once we have our staging and production project set up in the remote Superbase console, we can return to our local environment and set up a local Superbase instance. While writing code locally, the first step is to ensure you can run Superbase CLI in your terminal. If you've used the Node.js before, your computer should already have Node.js installed. If not, simply visit the official Node.js website, download the installer, and make sure Node.js is running in your machine. 
To check if Node.js is installed, simply type Node-V in your terminal. For example, I have version 22.15 installed. Next, you need the Supervisor CLI. There are two ways to use it. You can install it globally with npm install-g Superbase, or you can use npx to run it without a global install. Personally, I prefer using npx, so I don't have to install the CLI globally. To initialize a Superbase project locally, just run npx Superbase init in your project directory. If this is your first time running the command, it will create a new Superbase directory in your project. This directory contains preset folders and most importantly, a migration folder that stores all your database migration steps. The CLI also sets up a .git ignore file so that the temporary folders and files are not pushed to your remote repository. You will also find a config.tomo file, which is used to config your local Superbase instance. Before we move on, let's talk about database migrations, what they are and how they work during development, why they are important, even if you are just vibe coding. A database migration is essentially a version control the script or set of instructions that describe changes to your database schema. This can include creating or modifying tables, adding columns, setting up indexes, or changing constraints. Every time you make a structural change to your database, you'll generate a new migration file that records exactly what changed. During development, migration help you keep track of how your database evolves alongside your application code. It allows you to apply changes incrementally, roll back mistakes, and ensure that your local staging and production databases all stay in sync. This is especially important when working in a team or developing a scalable application. Even if you are just vibe coding, it's still crucial to use migrations. Without them, you risk of losing track of your schema changes, making it difficult to reproduce your setup or collaborate with others. Migration files serve as a reliable history of your database structure, making your development process more robust and maintainable. In summary, always use migration files to manage your database changes. They provide a structure, traceability, and consistency, which are essential for any serious application development. Once you have the local Superbase project initialized, you're ready to move on to creating your first migration. Let's walk through a practical example of creating a Superbase migration specifically to update road level security policies for your database. Suppose we are on the Euclidean AI admin page attempting to edit the course information. After making your changes and clicking Save Changes button, you encountered an error. This error occurs because of the row level security policy enforced by Superbase. Your current admin row does not have permission to update any records in the course table. As a result, your update request is rejected and you receive a 500 error. To validate the current policy, Open the Superbase table editor and click View Policies. You will notice there are only two policies, one allowing public users to view public courses and another permitting authenticated users to view all courses. Neither policy covers update operations. To reserve this, you will need to create a new migration file that allows admin users to update course information. Navigate to your Superbase directory where you will find existing migration files. Clear your terminal, then run the following command to create a new migration. Superbase CLI will generate a new empty migration file. Next, you will need to write the SQL script for the new policy. You can use a Copilot or ChatGPT to help generate the SQL script. Then paste it into your migration file. The SQL script should create a policy named admins can edit courses for the courses table. 
specifically for the update operation. The policy checks if the user has the admin role. If so, the update is permitted. Once you've added the SQL to your migration file, apply the migration with npx superbase migration up. The new migration will be applied to your local superbase database. Return to Superbase Studio. View the policies for the courses table and you will see the newly created update policy. It should match the logic specified in your migration file. Now, try saving your changes again from the admin page. This time, the update succeeded, confirming that your role level security settings are now correctly configured. Double check the courses table in Superbase Studio to verify that your changes have been reflected. That wraps up the first half of the Superbase tutorial for vibe coding. I hope you found it useful. In the next episode, I will continue by demonstrating how to set up authentication services in Superbase, including social auth with Google and GitHub. I will also show you how to push the local database changes to your remote Superbase projects using CI-CD pipelines specifically with GitHub Actions, targeting both the staging and production environments. If you like to see more content like this, please like and subscribe to the channel. Feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. I'm always keen to help. Stay tuned for the next videos.